Well, hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Connections. Today I'm very excited to have with me the incredible Lauren Yelenkovich. Hi Lauren! <laughs> hello! Oh my gosh, I'm so like my mind is blown. You actually said my name correct. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> so you want to laugh? I, I was searching, I was trying to find something where I could make sure I could say it and actually Yanni, there was a video yeah. and he said your name and I was like, okay, I'm going to replay <laughs> Sure. Oh, that is amazing. I love you right now. Well, some people have no idea how to say it, which is totally fine. I'm like, yeah, you do you. It's all good. Uh, no. I'm glad I got you that one. <laughs> yeah, that is awesome. Thank you so much. That's so that's so kind. <laughs> well, thanks for chatting with me, Lauren. I know you're always busy doing a lot of musical things, which we'll chat about, but I think you're home right now. So it's just good to catch this I moment. Am. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Thank you so much for being flexible with timing. <laughs> oh, of course. So. Anytime. <laughs> Mostly it's like, do I have a stable internet connection wherever I'm going? It's unclear. So yeah, that must be one of the hard things with keeping touch with people when you're like on tour, right? It's just because you never know where you're going, what you're losing. <laughs> yeah, it's like I, I, you know, sometimes well, so I've been recently doing some cruises and stuff. So the internet on that and sometimes can be really wonky, which you're like, oh, my gosh, <laughs> I'm at sea. <laughs> um, so but yeah, it, it, but normally it's OK, like on land, it's usually good. Um, but it's sometimes a stressful time. So this at home moment is awesome. <laughs> Thank get, you. Get your, get your uh, feet beneath you again. You feel like you're, you know, solid ground and then off you go again pretty soon. I know. So let's, yeah. <laughs> let's go back always, you know, with where you started singing, you know, was it a, a family thing or was it something that yeah. you, know, you figured out on your own? Um, okay. So I, I think I've been singing since I was really young um, and I don't really know where it stemmed from. I feel like my, my mother's mother, my grandmother, she um, played the piano and was always very encouraging, like, oh, you should sing, you should sing. And so I, I think that like from that, I kind of was always like singing around the house and I would like make up songs and stuff. And then I like enlist all the people in my neighborhood to be like, all right, let's record. <laughs> um, and so I have like audio tapes like cassette tapes that are like you know sing sing a song you know and I'd make people take their own parts and then I would like come in and be like all right everybody stop singing it's my solo you know like <laughs> um I was very bossy uh, <laughs> if you can imagine um and so and I always kind of like heard music all the time like in malls and stuff so my mom always says oh you know when you were younger you'd be like oh I have a song in my ear and meanwhile like nobody else can really hear the music but I was like I hear music. Um, and then Were I you think singing like, in the mall though, Lauren? That's the real question. Yeah, I know. Probably, okay. probably, <laughs> probably was. I probably, knowing me, I sing all my responses. So I mean, hey, um, <laughs> something's never changed. Um, and uh, so there, like, there's that. And then I grew up kind of, you know, just like a lot of kids did on Disney. I mean, I would listen to so much Disney. Um, and I would, and I'm a really good, uh, I'd like to say I'm a really good mimicker. You know, I would like try to sound exactly like people or like different accents and stuff. If I listen to it, I feel like I can pick it up fairly quickly. Um, so I don't know if that, if that, I hope that answers your question. It's just kind of when I was a kid. Oh, yeah. Uh, so yeah. Tell me my, that's about it. Like my mom, my mom's mom. And then apparently, though, we do have some musicians on my dad's side of the family. My dad is from Yugoslav from Croatia. Okay. And there is a uh, a guy with the last name of Yelankovic. Uh and he is he's like kind of well known over there. Um and then but I don't remember like what kind of singing he does. Like I think it's like I, I'm not really quite sure. Um and I've never met him but I just I saw I actually did a cruise and somebody came up to me and they were like you're this guy you you're related to this guy and the phone and he's like showing me the YouTube video of like I guess somebody that I'm related to and I was like that's kind of cool. <laughs> and then I have a, another cousin who's in Sweden who is in heavy metal and we met on Facebook. Um and so I I guess it kind of is like within the family yeah. but you know I don't know. It's, it's spread just... out. It wasn't necessarily right next to you, but it, it's in the genes. Yeah, I guess so. Because I mean, even when I went to school and stuff, like I never really, like my parents never listened to opera per se. Like I never like grew up on classical music. It was more like stuff on the radio or Disney or whatever. But for some reason, like, I don't know where it came from, but it is there. I, <laughs> I used to pretend to sing opera. I don't know what I was watching at that point, but like, that's what it is. So yeah. <laughs> so who were the big Disney stars when you were growing up? Oh man, I guess, uh, well, Jodi Benson. 
right? I mean, she's just like classic. Like I was obsessed with everything Ariel. That's all I wanted to be. Um, I even told my parents I wanted to change my name legally. Oh, really? uh, and so yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I was, I sprayed my hair like red uh, with spray cans, you know, like I wasn't allowed to dye my hair. Uh, and I, you know, would just pretend to be Ariel all the time <laughs> and to the point where I was like, okay, what actually needs to happen if I'm going to legally change my name? And my dad was like, well, we'll have to go to the courthouse. And I was like, okay, well then you should set up that meeting, you know, <laughs> like, I like what? the determination. You're, I know you're I was like really it. determined, <laughs> um, you know, I didn't get to change my name, but that, that's okay. Um, <laughs> I'm happy being my, my own name. And so I guess Jody Benson, and then I used to sleep with like the VHS tape of um, Sleeping Beauty mm. um, as my pillow. I would not go to bed without it. Uh, but yeah, like that. And then, you know, uh, Aladdin came into play. Um, oh my gosh. Uh, uh, what's her name? Susan Egan, right? Susan Egan, that's her for Beauty and the Beast yes, or, and yes, stuff yes. like that. I was very like obsessed with that. And um, so yeah, I mean, definitely I'm an eighties baby. So it's <laughs> <laughs> so great music from them. Right. Alan Menken, man, he is just genius. So just lighten it up that guy. So tell uh, me, yeah. it seems like, you know, you said you're getting, you know, the neighborhood kids involved in recording and stuff. Oh so yeah. <laughs> go straight into productions where your parents like we need to challenge you know channel this into a musical theater production you know I don't know I, I think it was um I used to sing in like the church choir and then I in school um I was very into music and they did like a Christmas concert every year or something or, or any type of concert and I was like I want to sing but I remember uh my very first solo I feel like was like the first Noel or something in a Christmas concert but I also we did like a, a play um and I, I knew that there was this one song in the play that I like really wanted to sing, but it actually wasn't the lead character. It wasn't the title. Oh, okay. of, it wasn't the title character, right? I wanted to be, I think like her name was Emily or something. It was something, I can't remember the name of the character, but I was like, I just want to sing Aaron. It was Aaron. It was Aaron. <laughs> the name of the character was Aaron and she had this really cool song and I wanted to do it and I that's and I did I did do it I was like so excited I was like I don't care about anything else I just want to sing the song <laughs> uh so I mean they put me in different things they're very much uh very encouraging so that was <laughs> that was great um and then it kind of just spun from there I think and then like continuing on always in school with all the school stuff choirs and like then we did show choir and then it was like you know you do solo stuff I'm sure you are a part of all of that as well right like you know, like the Nats competition, like all of these things, like, yes. it was just fun. So that's kind of where it started. Um, and then I, there was a show um, called Star Search and Star, okay. I remember, I was like, that. I remember okay. that. Okay. I was like, I don't know if you're too young for Star Search. No, no, no. Sasha. I was like, I remember that. <laughs> okay. So I was, I, w I loved watching Star Search when I was a kid. And um, I used to, I, you know, I was, I just, I just loved it. And so when I was in high school, there was, um, Ed McMahon had a show. I mean, it was the same thing, Ed McMahon Star Search and Next Big Star Search. And um, they were doing auditions. And my dad heard it on the radio. He said, oh, okay, I have to take you to the audition. <laughs> and I was kind of like, oh, really? Like, it's, it's like a, it's like a two hour drive away. Like, you know, but I was like, all right, let's go. Bye. Uh, and so, and I went and then I ended up, um, getting onto the show and I ended up winning the grand prize on Amazing. this show, which was like really kind of cool. Um, thank you. And I was like totally floored. It was like on television and, you know, I had like whatever X amount of stars. I don't even remember what it was, but I was just like, oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so maybe I can like kind of do this. And I sang a song called the prayer, which is a song that Andrea Bocelli and Celine Dion sing. And, um, and so that was kind of like my big, like stepping stone into like, all right, I'm here. But then years later, I have to tell you this because it goes right back to the childhood thing. We were cleaning out like VHS tapes in like our garage or whatever. And so we're going through all the family videos or whatever. And so I find this video of myself when I was about five and uh, my mom is filming and she's like, oh, okay, are you pretending to be on Star Search? And I said, yes, I'm pretending to be on Star Search. And she was like, okay, what are you going to say? I said, I'm going to sing You Are My Sunshine. And so I'd sing You Are My Sunshine. And she's like, okay, you get five stars. You go you, go Lauren. And then I said, hold on. Now I'm going to sing it the opera way. And I'd walk 
uh, off camera and I'd walk back on camera and I was like, you are my sunshine, you know, like as this five-year-old, who does that? I don't know who like never grew you up. You had your routine opera. down pat already. <laughs> Apparently. So, and you know, I'm, mean, of course my mom's like five stars, you win. But I, I don't even remember this. I like, don't even remember this. So the fact that like I won and then we found these videos, I was like, I don't know, but that's like seriously some manifestation right there. So <laughs> that sounds like a real waiting to happen. Lauren. You need to right? have the, like, and then real. <laughs> Exactly. It's like, I manifested that when I was a child. <laughs> <laughs> and God uh, bless yeah. the parents that are, were driving us to all these things, right? I know, right? Literally, they are the best. They're still that way. You know, they're like, oh, wh whatever you need, you know, we'll help you. <laughs> you know? so that's so great. incredible. So then was the Andrea Bocelli, I didn't even know he had a foundation, but he apparently has a foundation. Was that so before or after? It was after, so it was actually conjoined with, um, or joined with, I don't even know if I just made up that word, but that's where we are right now. Um, it was a joint uh, scholarship with the National Italian American Foundation as well. So it was the National Italian American Foundation's Andrea Bocelli World Scholarship. And so that was after, when I after my first year of college. So I oh, wow. ended up winning it when I was already in college. Um, and that was kind of wild. But I was such a baby, you know, I was like 18 years old. And I, you know, I, 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 I mean, I could sing, but like, I just was, you know, I, I, I've changed so much since then, you know, so oh, yeah. it's just kind of funny the way, it's, you know, and I got to meet they flew me out to LA and they had a big dinner and I got to meet some of the writers of the song, like Tony Rainus, uh, David Foster was there and Bocelli wow. was there. And I had to sing the prayer like in front of these people, which was not intimidating uh, at all. Yeah. Not, I mean, <laughs> as an 18 year old, I was like, oh my gosh, I can't. And I'm like looking like I'm like, Andrea's like maybe like five or 10 feet away from me. And he's mouthing all the words. <laughs> And as I'm singing and I was like, oh my gosh, I can't, like I'm having a moment, <laughs> <laughs> you know, on stage. <laughs> so it was very nice. Um, but yeah, that's when that happened. <laughs> so kind of an out of body experience there. Um, but yeah, tell For us sure. about Manhattan School of Music then. Yeah, um, I, well, I wanted to definitely sing. Uh, I knew that. And I always wanted to be in New York City. I grew up in Florida. I was born in Texas, grew up in Florida. And um, I just, my parent, my grandmother, my paternal grandparents lived in uh, here in New York City. And so we were coming up all the time. And of course, like seeing shows. And I obviously, ever, like we all grew up on like Broadway stuff and doing shows and whatnot. And so I was like, oh, I want to sing. I think I can do this and I want to audition. And so I like looked at a couple of different schools. We went on, you know, some tours you can do when you're in high school or whatever and I was kind of like oh no I feel really great with Manhattan School of Music you mm -hmm. know I just I really liked it there um and so um I auditioned there and I auditioned to like Berkeley College of Music and some other ones and I ended up getting like full scholarships to everywhere else except Manhattan School of Music oh, oh, I really? got a partial scholarship but I was like I'm going to Manhattan uh so <laughs> probably edit that one out um, but yeah <laughs> so uh you know that's where I ended up and I did love it and um but it, and it was fun being in the city you know I was able to like I would sometimes skip class and like go audition for Broadway shows uh and I'd sit out there with all the non-equity members and go and wait for my time you know uh and try and um I ended up getting an off-Broadway show in college Oh, and awesome. so I did get to do, yeah, so that, it was really fun. It was with, um, it was a show that was called The Music Teacher and it was Wallace Shawn and Wallace Shawn, I don't know if you know who he is. He's, um, was in the, he was like the teacher in Clueless and, oh, okay. uh, in Princess Bride, he's like inconceivable. Uh, <laughs> he's just, and you, if you see him, you would know him. He's in yeah, Gossip yeah. Girl, like, uh, you know, and he's just such a, a Blair's like, just father, a joy. right? Her step yes, yes, exactly. Okay, no. Exactly. <laughs> and so, uh, him and his brother wrote a, uh, wrote a, wrote a musical. And so I was, I made my off Broadway JV in that, and that's how I got my equity card. And then, you know, then I was like, all right, this is cool, but some of my teachers at MSM didn't really like that, but that's okay. You know, yeah, <laughs> gotta do what you got to do. I, I was going to say, I wonder what that's like, because I feel like it didn't happen when I was going to my school in Michigan, but I think afterward yeah. you had to sign something where it was like, they basically approved where you performed, which I thought was crazy, but. <laughs> you know, this is what I think. You're going to school for this. And if you have an opportunity, that's like, <clears throat> pardon, to do what you're going to do, yeah. um, why not? Take it. <laughs> 
yeah exactly <laughs> so <clears throat> pardon um yeah no, I did have to like uh I did have to organize like my schedule you know we rehearsed every day Monday through Friday or whatever or even through Saturday I feel like and I can't I don't even remember but it was a, it was a short run it was like a few months or whatever but um uh, Manhattan School Music is on 122nd Street in Broadway and our rehearsals were down like on 42nd Street and so I had one teacher that was very much like uh no <laughs> you can't miss my class and I was like can I take like can I anything like can I work with a tutor can I you know just yeah uh, you find know, another come way to a different class yeah exactly can I work it a little bit on my own like uh and she was very much like no so on our lunch breaks you can you can ask the, like the whole cast and production like you decide or at that time they did uh how long your lunch break would be if you want it like you would rehearse longer or you would take a shorter lunch break so we all decided to do like an hour and a half of lunch break so that was just enough time for me to spend a half hour going back up on the train to 122nd street, spending a half hour in my class <laughs> and then leaving again and going half hour back down to 42nd street to make it back for rehearsal. And that's what I did, <laughs> you know, it's crazy, but it's like, can we please get a little slack here? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's, that's how that came about. And, um, but other than that, like the school was great. I, I really liked it. Definitely was a stepping stone, but I, I, I really much, um, really much, oh my, I can't even speak today. Um, I can never but, speak. So right. That's, I feel that. I feel <laughs> that. It's like, what did I say? Um, but I learned a lot also like outside of school, I went to some programs, the International Vocal Arts Institute, uh, IVAI, uh, and um, I did all of the programs with Joan Dorneman and year every summer, you know, and I think that I learned a lot. I mean, doing those programs, it was like, it was like an intensive program. And um, you just had a lot, you just, I feel like I learned more there than I did at school. Yeah. In regards to like performing and being in the real world with singing opera anything you did you, anything I was doing opera crossover pop like musical theater whatever but like you definitely gained a lot of knowledge uh in those summers and working with all of those incredible teachers I mean you know and that's what you need just, the book stuff yeah. is great but that's what you really need is to get out and do stuff exactly and sometimes there's not a lot of opportunity I don't know about nowadays like in schools it's, it's been a hot minute since I graduated <laughs> yeah. um but you know at least like th th those programs were very influential with what I was doing and what I got to do. So I'm grateful for those two in addition to school. <laughs> yeah, no, I think, I mean, you really need both. That's mm. the thing is, it's just, like I said, there's a lot of book knowledge, especially I started as a music ed major. And there's okay. So much, like, so much so. ed classes, <laughs> mm. um, but tell us about your voice. So did your voice, you have like some of the craziest high notes was it always like that or was it something you found developing as you grew up I mean you know I think I've always had like a what I like to call a freakishly high voice <laughs> um because like some people don't actually understand they're like oh your voice is high and I'm like no oh, that's like kind of weirdly high <laughs> like <laughs> it's a little beyond high guys <laughs> yeah um and I think that my my first um like I said, I didn't, I didn't really grow up with opera. So when I did get, uh, um, like my first voice teachers, they're like, Oh no, you can sing high. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and I just remember like doing some warm ups and whatnot. And so they were really, you know, my one teacher says, I mean, he definitely was like, you need to be singing this and this and this, you know? Um, so it kind of came from them. I didn't really know I mean, I think I, I, I had it, but I didn't really know what it was. Yeah. If that makes sense, you know? Um, and then I think the ability, like I said, I'm, I'm a pretty good mimicker. Um, I think that also kind of helped me with like being able to sing opera, but also transit, like doing different types of music, like yeah. pop, but not sounding like an opera singer. <laughs> um, because sometimes you do have do. those like, yeah, you have like these opera singers that are like, oh, I'm going to sing like pop. And you're like, oh, this sounds like an opera yeah. singer singing pop. But like, yeah. I didn't want to be that person. You know, I wanted to be able to do theater and not sound like an opera person or, you know, use different parts of my voice within whatever genre I'm in. Um, 
obviously some classic musical theater uses all of that high soprano stuff but like I can also do a little belting you know which is like people don't really realize <laughs> or like some people don't realize that I do have a lower register as well so sometimes I like to highlight that too uh it's not it's not always about the high notes although <laughs> we like to call them our money notes because they are impressive I guess <laughs> uh, my thing is just like I hope I don't like you know just constantly sing something high I mean that could probably get a little shrill and annoying after a while and I don't want that <laughs> no it's good um, to show the whole voice and then also do you feel like I don't know if I've imagined this but I feel like people that can sing really high their belt actually goes higher too yeah you know it's it's kind of funny that 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 happened I remember when a teacher like brought that up to me and I was like wait really and he's like yeah and I was like all right let's test this out for a moment <laughs> You know, and yeah, it's true. It's true, very true. It's very interesting how that happens. I wish I knew more about education, like vocal pedagogy. So, yeah, I'm just not going to speak today. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm so fascinated with it. I feel like you can never learn it all. But yeah, it's so interesting to me, the different types of voices. Um, so was it when yeah. you just left school that you went into this production of it was based on Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? I have to look up the name. Golden. Yeah, ticket. the Golden Ticket. Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, it was like, um, what year was that? I feel like it was 2010 maybe yeah so I did um well I was just like every other young singer a lot of people do these young artist programs and they audition and whatnot and I think that I was trying to figure out like what to do in the summers and that's fairly new out there I had been out of school for a couple of years but um and had the opportunity to work with some different companies but that one in particular I was really excited about and so I did um I did. I was a part of the A Little Night Music and it was with Isaac Mizrahi directing, which was really cool. And then I was able to cover uh, the in The Golden Ticket, um, uh, the role of Violet Beauregard, <clears throat> who was like the one that blows up into the blueberry and sings <laughs> this like ridiculously high, uh, this ridiculously high, um, <laughs> you know, song about blowing up into the blueberry. Um, so it, I think it's like sustains like a high G for like multiple measures or something. And you're like, okay. Um, so yeah, that's, that was, it was fairly soon out of college. I loved that whole entire time. Um, it was really fun, but it was with Opera Theater of St. Louis. So I was there for a couple of months in the summer. Yeah. And that was something new. So it's cool to explore, but tell us, I mean, in your resume, you've done all these amazing things. One of the things that of course oh, sticks mm -hmm. out is your relationship with Yanni though. So yeah. How, how and, and how, did that come about? That actually happened in the same year, uh, okay. right after, uh, right after that summer, um, I got a call and they're like, oh, you know, we'd like to uh, send you these songs. They, they saw a couple of videos of mine online and I would like to, you know, have a couple of songs you just sing and email them back. Can you record them and email them this week? And it was Halloween weekend. Uh, and I was like, yeah, sure. Like, awesome. Like, super cool. Like, I was so pumped. Uh, and so... And then like a couple days passed by and then I got a call another day, like I think it was a Sunday morning. And um, I got the call and, and they were like, actually, you know, can we fly you tomorrow morning to sing for Yanni? There, he lives in Florida, which is actually 25 minutes from where I grew up uh, in Florida. And so I was like, um, yes, yes. <laughs> I could be I, available. Like, yeah, I was like available. I need to be <laughs> back on Thursday, but I'm here. I'm ready. Um, and so it ended up working out really great. And I kind of was like, yeah, this just sort of whirlwind ever since. You know, I landed at the airport and they went to go fit me for in ear monitors. And I don't know if you've ever seen them. I think they're here somewhere, actually. <laughs> it probably could show you. Nope, 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 nope. Yes. Um, my in ear monitors, which are like, basically what you use when you're on stage I didn't realize they were custom um, like I've seen them you know like they're custom with. yeah so these are my very first ones that I ever had with them. don't tell him I have them. <laughs> uh <laughs> because like um you, you're supposed to get new ones every so often or whatever but these are them and they stick in your ears like this and you you know can sing inside these basically like they're like hearing aids, I guess you could say. They look like that. They're the bigger when old you're ones, on, right? For people that don't know, when you're on stages, the sizes that you're on, there's no way yeah. you can hear yourself. There's no way you can hear yourself. And also it's what is used for like um, keeping the band together. It's usually that's how you hear everybody and everybody's playing at the same time. But yeah, exactly. Some of the venues that you play at or that Yanni was playing at are huge like arenas and venues. And these like are custom. They have generic ones. 
but I landed and they sent me to go get custom ones and I hadn't even sung for him. And I was like, so did I get the job? <laughs> like, cause these are like kind of expensive to make. <laughs> um, and I kind of went with it. And then, and then within a week I was down in Puerto Rico performing with Yanni, um, which was the beginning of, you know, and I kind of was just like, oh my gosh. And, and then they were all talking about like, um, they were all talking about the tour that was coming up in Mexico. And then they're talking about this US tour. And I, I just like, didn't really, I was like, so did, am I, I, did I, am I, you know. I, What's the story here? <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. I was like, am I a part of her? And they're like, of course you are. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, <laughs> what is my life right now? Um, and so that was the beginning of the end. That was back in 2010. Uh, my very first tour with Yanni. Well, we did one date in Puerto Rico. Ended up getting, it was supposed to be right on my birthday too. And so Yanni's birthday is the day after mine. I'm totally going on a tangent. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, I love um, that though. You can yeah. do dual parties. Yeah, I was like, oh my gosh. So, it, But I had no idea that his birthday was then. But it was supposed to be Puerto Rico and then like the Dominican Republic on November 13th, which is my birthday. And uh, and, and the, the one in the Dominican was canceled. Unfortunately, there was a huge uh, hurricane. So it was one show in the end, but I was just like, this is just like the most kick-ass like start to my birthday weekend. <laughs> you know, I was like, this is like unreal. Um, and so that was my very first thing. And then my big first tour was in Mexico in January of 2011. And then, and then we did a big US tour and yeah. And so it's kind of been nonstop ever since up until 2020 when we hit COVID. Um, so we haven't um, been back out there, but I hear that maybe that's the possibility of sometime soon. So we'll see. Yeah. But so that's, that's the, how that started. If I answered your question, I'm not even quite sure. It's crazy though. Uh, it sounds like you didn't really have time to even take it in. It's just like, it just happened, happened. It just, I actually did not tell anybody. Like I didn't tell anyone when I first did that gig in Puerto Rico. I didn't, and I have friends in Puerto Rico because again, the Institute of Vocal Art, you know, the um, International Vocal Arts Institute, IVAI was, we did, you know, weeks in Puerto Rico over the summers and I have friends there. I didn't tell anyone. And, uh, and cause I was like, I just don't know what this is going to be like, you know? And it was like an auditorium of, well, an arena of like, almost like I think 16,000 people or something wow. you know and I was like oh my gosh <laughs> um and and of course like I'm a very nervous person too so sometimes it's like I don't know I don't want to tell anyone and have it be like horrible uh and so but I ended up getting a, a video from a friend of mine that was like um did you just walk out on stage <laughs> and sing with Yanni I'm pretty sure that was you that's what he said uh, and so they sent me this video. So I do have a video of like one of my very first times out there with That's him. That's awesome. But, and yeah, and I'm just, I've been, I, I love working with him and I'm so grateful to be a part of that Yanni family. And we've definitely gone on um, to, to great things and huge, huge concerts and kind of like unheard places and um, just been given the opportunity to see the world and, uh, and sing and do what I love is kind of, I feel like a dream. And I just have to also pinch myself all the time. Like, I'm like, it's actually happening. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> well, you mentioned, play, you know, interesting places. And you had a really special experience in Saudi Arabia. Because I think, yes. was that the first time, like, it was a mixed audience. It was a female performance. It was, like, totally new for that country. Yeah, that was... Um, that's definitely like one of my high, like highlights I'd have to say if people ask me oh what's your what's the most memorable performance you've ever had and I think that definitely that one uh in particular is at the top um so we went to Saudi Arabia in 2017 and um yeah it was the very first woman to sing on stage in Saudi Arabia in front of a mixed audience of men and women it was also the first time that like families could come and see a concert together uh which was really special and um yeah, definitely moving. Like, I think like by the end, as I'm like hitting that high note at the end of Nightingale, like I was already like cheering and then Yanni like introduced me and I was just like, yeah, I was like, please, like, I, I you know, you wear like a fake eyelashes and stuff on my, on, on stage. And so I was like, just like, like can anyone on. else see that the, my eyes are, yeah, I know. I was like, please like just keep the glue intact. <laughs> uh, you know, and it, it was definitely very moving. And, and afterwards talking with people was, just you know they were like oh you're gonna be in our history books that's like something I never thought I would see like somebody walk on stage holding a microphone and that's something that like I take you know that that you probably do every day I do every day like something you never really thought about or like put much thought to but um when they said that I was like oh yeah okay that was 
wild and we didn't have to have our heads covered we were able to wear our own um dresses and just modify where like a, I wore like a, kind of like a sparkly sweater like three-quarter length sweater uh and and it was really really special definitely and the people were so loving and everybody there was just so welcoming so yeah well That's... speaking of of Nightingale um which is yeah. an incredible song because like you think it's like oh, beautiful you. and then it just you're like wait there's more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you how that came about. That was that was interesting. Oh, um, tell me, tell me. Well, I'll let you. Well, I'll let I'll let you ask your question, and then and okay. I'll, I'm sure I'll okay. leave it. Then we'll somewhere. circle back. Okay. <laughs> well, I was going to ask though because it's on this album. I'm going to say it wrong, but Inspirato is that right? Um, yeah, that's exactly right. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to say it wrong slash getting every single word right. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, my husband's awesome. family right. is Italian, so I'm like trying to help my pronunciation ah! a bit. Um, but, yeah, <laughs> but that album, it. it was with these like who's who list of classical and crossover world, like Catherine Jenkins, Renee yeah. Fleming, Placido Domingo. So what yeah. was that like? Just figuring out you're going to be on that lineup and. I'll, well, this has to do with exactly with the, how it came about. Okay. So I'll, I'll tell you, it's all going to be in one. It's going to be kind of awesome. It's I perfect. mean, well, I think it's awesome. <laughs> I, I was like, oh my gosh, is this like actually happening? Um, so what happened was in the first tour, uh, singing with Yanni, like, you know, you sing backstage and warm up or whatever. And I don't think that Yanni actually knew how high I could go, but he was like hearing me warm up. And I think one day it was not, I think it was in San Francisco. And one day he, he said, Oh, send Lauren out. Yeah. This was like right before her, right before sound check before one okay. of our shows. And, um, and Oh my gosh, this is wild because I was just there at that venue like a few months ago. Oh, really? Probably, yeah, because I went to go see The Shins with my sister and I'm pretty sure it was at the Warwick uh, because I remember like backstage, it's like, weird. okay, anyways, I'm having a moment <laughs> um, that all of this is like coming together. Um, wow, cool. Ah, okay. Um, and so he was like, oh, come come on stage and I want you to, you know, how high can you sing? And I told him and I was like, I'm saying for good pretty high and he's like okay we'll sing this melody and I said okay I'll sing this melody and and so I sang it and then he said okay now sing it up the octave and it's like you know da, 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 da. <laughs> and I was like okay uh and he's like great we're going to China uh I haven't been there in 15 years and I wrote the song specifically for China and it was with the Chinese flute and you're going to be the nightingale and you're going to sing uh so we're going to write a vocal line for the song and you're going to come to Florida and we're going to write it and record it and and you're gonna sing it when we go to China, and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to China, <laughs> um, <laughs> and also like, oh my gosh, that is so cool, <laughs> um, and okay, yeah, sure, cool, awesome, and so I was like listening to the song, and so <clears throat> after the tour was over, um, we did a big tour that year, but after like a few months after, it was in the fall, we ended up, I, I went to Yanni's house, and I was there for two days, and we recorded it, we wrote it, recorded it in the same day, um, and and then like sang it through the next day so it was really only one day of recording yeah uh and it's kind of a repetitive song so it was like <laughs> what did I do um learning it was I mean like learn like like figuring out what I actually did and then to you know translate that into live performance I was like okay 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 this is, and there's like no music for it so like all my music notes were like arrow up this part <laughs> arrow down like I wrote like myself like this code um of how to sing it um, but so we did it and we did the song and at the end he, he was like, this is going to be great. This is going to be so great. And it's going to go on my opera album. And I was like, uh, what is your opera album? <laughs> like what, what, like, I want to know more about this. He's like, it's with Placido. It's with Renee Fleming and Rolando Villasan. And like, all, you know, all these like people that like, yeah, uh, I in like grew up listening yeah. to, uh, you know, like as a young singer and after, you know, I started to be affiliated with opera, I was like, oh, okay. Well, you know cool um and I was like oh my gosh this is wild like okay cool um and and it and it did happen but it was you know this all happened about like it takes a long time for these things to come to fruition right there's so many moving parts and you do have so many singers involved and um and so before it was actually ready to go I mean it was it had been talked about and I knew that it was happening for like four years maybe uh -huh. you know but like, in, you know, and so then it's like, you're kind of waiting. And and so that's how Nightingale came about. I've been singing it with him now, obviously, since then. Uh, and um, he's kind of coined me as as the Nightingale, which has been really fun. And, um, and it's just it's such a it's a song that's like, 
every night, you know, I really feel it every single night, every single night. It's not just the same thing. It doesn't feel the same way. I mean, even for any, any type of performance, it's never just the same. Right. Um, so every night it kind of takes on a new, you have a new experience with it, but it's definitely, um, been like I don't have any tattoos but if I did ever get a tattoo <laughs> I feel it. like it would get like a nightingale yeah um it's just like something that's become so uh, like a part of me I even have a really dear friend of mine who um when I started singing the song she collects a ton of things and so she was like I'm gonna I'm gonna I have to I have to send this to you <laughs> and she like has started this whole collection of nightingales for me oh wow so yeah so like all these like really beautiful pieces like vintage old, like things that are you know that you don't normally find like she finds a lot of it on ebay and, and it's just something that i i absolutely love and that what well, i have like all over my piano now it's such basically like all nightingales um <laughs> so and then yeah so being a part of that album having that song on there and so like you flip through the pages i was like do i even have one right here with me no it's out in the living room i think i could like show you know you open the page an actual CD because you know we don't actually like use those too much anymore um <laughs> except me like I have records and stuff like I'm like oh yeah um you know, I was like opening it for the first time I got my first copy when we were in Berlin I think um and I remember opening it and like and I was like going through it and I was like I was like this is wild wild <laughs> um you know it's like your parents like, must have been so fine. proud oh my gosh they I I I, I think so um so yeah, it's something I'm definitely ha um, proud of, and you know, and I'm just I'm so grateful to be among those people. Like my mind, I sometimes just don't believe it. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it sounds like a good name for an album title. Just throwing it out. Yeah, there. right. I like what you're. I like her going with this. I like that. Just, I like that. We're gonna lead the conversation yeah, yeah. now down the recording route. So you actually did. I don't think there's any Writing copies because. <laughs> I didn't see it on Spotify, so I don't know if they exist. Okay. But are yeah. there copies still of your album you did at 16 with a Grammy Award? Oh my gosh. Are there? There are. I have them. Like I have all the You have to share. <laughs> I know, right? It's so funny. I mean, I was so young. They're all originals. It was done with the um a gentleman, his name was Dave Miranda. And um yeah, I flew out to LA and recorded all of those songs and it was so fun. Um and yeah, I do have that, but it was like pre Spotify and pre like, yeah, yeah. you know, I was selling it in like Barnes and Noble. Our days, so we didn't stuff, have like the local. Stuff. <laughs> yeah, we didn't have any of that. Um, and then my next one that came out was definitely like already like online and stuff. So um, yeah, I do. It's funny. I do have them somewhere. I, I, I guess I, I don't know if I should, re I don't know. Would anybody be interested copy. in that? I don't know. I, st <laughs> I bet I guess. people would be. <laughs> I'm like, I feel like I, what was it? I don't even, and yeah, it was just called Lauren, right? I can't remember. I remember getting it all done though. My mom, man, she was on it. We had like photo shoots and, uh, you know, all the artwork and everything was all, you know, that was back in the day. I was really, we were really indie, still, still doing it, still doing the indie scene. Um, oh, yeah. so yeah. Mm, yeah. But oh my gosh. It's so funny <laughs> that you brought that up. <laughs> But it's fun. I I feel like I, I get that we may not want everyone to hear us at that age, but it is fun to go back and listen and be it's like, fun. as a person. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it is. It is. It's really cool. I, you know, I have all my, which I'm sure there are more singers out there like this, but I have a lot of storage of like cassette tapes that I recorded all my like, you know, lessons on, right? Um, which I'm probably like, oh, I can probably get rid of some of these now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just so fun. I um, I have yeah. a lesson too with one of my teachers. It's just so interesting. You go back and you're like, wow, okay, I have yeah. improved. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That. So, okay, that's good. That's good. Or okay, I'm still doing this. Yeah, not good. <laughs> the sad, sad bonus. Like, yeah. yeah, you're like, okay, okay, okay. Clearly have it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but tell us yeah. now, the one people can stream is Wildest Dreams. So that is yeah. on Spotify and it has an original song. So tell us about Wildest yeah. Dreams. Wildest Dreams is is, um, is an album that it, it's it kind of like all my favorite crossover pieces or pieces that I wanted to make crossover. Um, and at the time I was working with a manager who has unfortunately passed away. His name mm -hmm. was Lyle Walker. It was really just um, an angel of a man. And he... Um, kind of was in the country scene actually he was really um he kind of was the one that found 
uh, Leanne Rhymes. Oh, wow. And, uh, and yeah, and actually this all happened from my senior prom or my, was it my senior prom or junior prom? I, my parents were at the school auction and there was a, um, a tour bus that was up for auction. I guess one of the, one of the kids in the school, their family owned this bus and, um, would rent out, it was like a party bus essentially, but it's like, it is, a, it is a tour bus. And, um, and so my parents put in a bid or whatever and they won it. And so I got to take it to my junior, senior oh, nice. prom is what it was called because I went to, a um, a, 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 like a Baptist school, not Baptist, but, um, a private Christian school, I guess you could say. Yeah. And, uh, and so we didn't have dances. So we got to go to the senior, junior, senior prom. And I spent the whole entire time, not with my date, not <laughs> with my friends. I spent the time hanging out with the driver, wanting to know all about driving Leon Rhymes. Cause this was the bus that she had used and all anything. What, what, like, what was she like? Like, what was her manager like? And he's like, actually her manager is here in Florida and he's up in Orlando right now. And I think that you should meet him. So I went to go meet this manager the next day um, with my hair all done up from the prom. <laughs> I did not wash it. And I sang for him on the side of the street. Uh, in a parking lot because the hotel didn't have a CD player that we could use as my for my like accompaniment track and so that's how yeah that's how I met him and um so it was a joint effort with him and he introduced me to the writers of Wildest Dreams and he's like you have to sing this song like this is a beautiful song and I really connected with it and um so I was able to put it on the album and I I felt like it was the one original song uh, on the album and it definitely deserved the title. And it was kind of like the whole story of like, yeah, in your wildest dreams, you can, if you just stick to whatever you feel in your heart, they can come true. Um, and in, in some way, in some form, you know? So that's about a little bit about that album, but we also have like my favorite, like phantom songs on there and uh, some like old Bill Collins songs that I really like. Yeah, Autumn Leaves, you know, I was, obs I'm obsessed with Ava Cassidy and I loved her <laughs> version of that. And um, so, yeah, that's, that's online and available and hopefully something new will be coming out shortly. I've, I've done like singles since then um, and some Christmas songs. I feel like my earring is hitting my, <laughs> my head <laughs> on. I'm like, if you're hearing like a clicking sound um, and yeah, two in particular that are going to be coming out soon, but I don't have a release date for you, but uh, so stay tuned. Do you have a newsletter where people yeah. can set up or like sign up? For? You know, I do. It's on my website. Um, I need to be more consistent about <laughs> it. I have definitely, um, I don't know. I'm sure like a lot of other people are like this, but I, you know, I, 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 it's been me on my own for a very long time. So, um, I, I try, I try to do it all myself, edit the videos, out of, you know, all the social media yep. stuff. It's becoming really, uh, really <laughs> intense. Um, I was like talking about this the other day. I was like, I create, I, I catch so much content, like on my phone. I'm always like, oh my gosh, like I film everything, but I just don't have enough time to like do it and put it yeah. together. Um, especially with all these like trending audios and, oh, you know, so I tried to do it all. I try to dedicate like a certain amount of time per day and I'm like, all right, now we got to move on. Um, but yes, my newsletter, I, I do have a newsletter, um, that I try to send out, um, and I need to be better about, uh, <laughs> but you can, definitely, I understand, I understand. Yeah, I think everybody goes through that. It's like, oh my gosh, I have to update my website. I, you know, <laughs> cause I'm trying to do it all on my own and I need well, to find an assistant. <laughs> what's your most active platform that if you're on that one, people will like, will get the news first. Yeah. Um, well, definitely the anything through my website will be okay. the first people to know all through my website is usually how I test things. I also have a phone number that people can text me at. You oh, can cool. text me directly and those people get to know a lot of the first things. And I do, I have a, a Patreon page that has been very quiet and sleepy, but, um, <laughs> when these things start to come up, that's where things will start to happen first. Um, but definitely hit up the website. That's the best. That's the best one. Um, okay. And then of course, like I'm on like all the, all the things I, I, I haven't really fully uh, gotten the TikTok things, um, yeah. but you know, like Instagram and stuff. Yeah. It's very complicated, but I do have to say that I did post a video of me tripping uh, and that got like 20,000 views. Oh, uh, okay. so, <laughs> not so much my singing videos, but definitely me tripping and doing handstands. They're, they're, they're going. Uh, Those are golden. <laughs> golden moments, they say, Natasha, golden. <laughs> 
yeah. But um, yeah, so that I have a little come some things coming up, and I usually announce like tour stuff. So I'll be heading to Kentucky this weekend, and um, so you get to know all of that uh, as they are announced through the through the website. So we'll yeah. put that on the screen. It'll be up now when we're actually showing this. Um, so check her out. If uh, you said Kentucky, how many shows do you have there? I have one show there. I'm doing it with the with the Owensboro Symphony, and then um, then I'll be in Lincoln, Nebraska, and heading to I do a couple cruises every now and then. Uh, I headline some cruises, so I'll be with Celebrity, and then with Seaborn, and um, I'll have a little bit some time in Wisconsin if we got any midwesterners there so yeah it's gonna be a fun little season i'm so pumped so yeah we'll put all your information go out follow like buy do you have physical copies of your album or no i do have physical copies of my yeah. album <laughs> people buy it please <laughs> someone come and get them someone <laughs> buy them <laughs> ask for um, them at shows see if you can get yeah, her to sign ask it for them at shows because sometimes i forget that i have <laughs> them with me uh and i don't sell them but I, I do i do sell them online on my website you can get that and um yeah and then hopefully you'll be able to stream and stuff online too so Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Lauren. I'm going to give you a couple rapid fires and I'm going to let you go because I always try okay. to keep these to a half an hour and it almost never happens. So of course. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so, so excited. Much. Rapid okay. fire questions. I'm really nervous, but okay, I'm ready. <laughs> so, I'm ready. well, now, now that puts pressure on me. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> what are the most used apps on your phone? Oh my gosh, the most used apps on my phone are Instagram, um, Splice, it's a video editor, um, Apple, iTunes. I listen to Apple Music and um a uh, facebook and uh, yeah that those those i have to say <laughs> probably yeah those okay. are my go-to's <laughs> so uh have you ever either played a prank or had a prank played on you on tour oh you know that's hard i feel like <laughs> yes and yes uh i think uh, one time i did on an april fool's day i came out uh in sound check with my pink sparkly guitar which is right there oh nice um, <laughs> and i pretended to play the guitar while we were in sound check um and yanni loved it so that was fine um and then yeah probably i think that i can remember like somebody tried to put like a fake spider or something on my pillow or something on the bus and yeah that's that's frightening <laughs> i'm trying to i keep that those are the first things that popped in my mind what is your favorite condiment oh totally random. my <laughs> oh okay uh sriracha Sriracha. okay anything spicy buffalo sauce buffalo sauce is my go-to if i see it on the menu i have to get it i haven't been eating any meat recently i usually now stick to fish but let's be real it's all about the sauces <laughs> so buffalo sauce and sriracha are my two go-to's how about a recent purchase that made you have buyer's remorse okay i don't no, if I get full buyer's remorse because I I I I I literally mull over things, anything like above a hundred dollars, where I'm like, do I need this? So it's in your cart and, and you you take it out and in. <laughs> yeah, or I leave it there, or, or okay. and then I think about it for days and like sometimes weeks. Um, but I guess uh, but I never really have buyer's remorse because I'm like, no, like I needed this, like but I think about all of my big purchases. So you take it. Um, yeah. Have you ever had when it's like a sale and you're like, you have all this stuff and you're like, okay, get the sale. Yeah. And then you keep, I don't really need this. I don't need this. And then at the end, you're like, well, I don't yeah. get the sale. I'm getting nothing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's like, what did I, why did I just spend all my time doing this? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I do that. I do that for sure. I'm like, oh, do I need this? Oh, okay. I don't need this. Oh, I missed the sale. Oh, okay. Great. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if I would say, I, I can't find something I would be remorseful for when buying something. <laughs> Okay, I have too good. much, too many things, too many things. I need to get rid of things though. Oh, like, I but I think it's like clothes, like, and old things. I'm a pack rat. Yes. <laughs> Auction them off. No. <laughs> okay. So last one, when you're on yeah. tour, what is your go-to entertainment after a show? Okay. After a show. Ooh, it depends. Um, usually, uh, I mean, I'm usually on Instagram, like scrolling, but um, any type of like TV show that I'm currently obsessing over, I am a, um, oh, okay. Well, I can tell you this. I, I have a true crime person. I'm a very, I love anything yep. <laughs> about true crime. I pretty much know everything about everything. I'm obsessed. 
Um, and uh, so I find like podcasts very interesting about that or like any type of TV show that's like true crime related um, or if it's got like a good story, it doesn't have to be true crime, but it is like around murder and stuff. That's yeah, also yeah, yeah. good. Um, and then also recently been uh, going down a rabbit hole uh, of Ryan's Roses, which hmm. is Ryan Seacrest does this little um, bit on Kiss FM uh about like it's 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 addicting it's addicting and uh and they like you know they call up people and they say oh we have roses for you to send and uh they send them to their lover or whatever or that's supposed to be their wives or their husbands and they end up sending it to somebody else and it's like really oh, much drama no. for your mama. oh my gosh it gives me so much anxiety but <laughs> literally for the past four days they had like a road trip that i did i did two road trips um, and that's all i've listened to but i listen to them on youtube so i down uh, you know it's on youtube and, and even to the point where now I'm home and don't even put on a television show. I watch, I watch YouTube yeah. um, on my TV and it says Ryan's Roses, but it's just the audio. So it's literally like I'm watching nothing and I'll like <laughs> lay out there and I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, I cannot believe what's happening on this radio station. <laughs> um, so that, but usually like anything true crime or like, you know, a show that I'm binging, like I still, I need to watch the second season of Only Murders in the Building, but don't Ooh, tell yes. what happened. I won't tell you. Just finished it last night, though. Oh, I'm excited. <laughs> you gotta get on that. <laughs> I, need to get, I need to get over the Ryan's Roses thing and get back in my TV. But usually that's my guilty pleasure after tour stuff. <laughs> but also the U.S. Open is happening now, too. So that's something to take into consideration. So it's usually that. <laughs> that's a lot of answers. So <laughs> that is totally fine. Well, thank you so much, Lauren. This has just been the best time chatting with you. Thank you so uh much. I love you. You are the best. I've had such a blast. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. You saw my little burn on my hand. I'm sorry. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I did a photo shoot this weekend with this big uh, event and they had some dry ice and I'm pretty sure that's oh. where it came from. <laughs> so uh, yeah, because I never burned myself when curling my hair, but I did, <laughs> I did notice this and I was like, well, that's getting larger and don't really know. Uh, so anyways, that, that's what that's from. But anyways, <laughs> hearts to Lots you. Of hearts. <laughs> Thank you so much for, uh, for having this wonderful platform for singers and, uh, oh. and artists. It's, it, it means so much to us. And, um, and you are just like pure joy. You oh, go Lord. out of your <laughs> way you. to make people feel so loved and you put together these fabulous concerts and just you're just there for the whole entire community and i hope that you know that you are so appreciated and we love you natasha so thank you bless you thank you so much lauren um it's yeah. been such a treat just to chat with you and everybody so thank you so much i'm just a huge fan so i love it oh, i love you oh my gosh well, you're not far from me when i'm back like after this trailer tank yes and do you sing in new york because i feel like you're touring all these you know yeah. crazy places but i do i actually want to do some more stuff in new york and you know that's going to take a little work on my end but i i, I can get it done i'm gonna get it done i know i can do it it's Let just know. like i'll be there <laughs> you know individual it's like lauren the artist lauren the creative lauren the manager lauren the pr lauren the marketing you know like <laughs> lauren the designer so it's just like uh, i gotta tap into one of those <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> get it done <laughs> But yes, for sure, for sure. You will be the first person I tell. Oh, thank you so newsletter. much. Don't tell anyone okay. on the newsletter. <laughs> I have the inside scoop, guys. But <laughs> yes. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank Let's you, Lauren. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>